Hello, Nick from Insta Connect here. In this video, we're going to do an unboxing and setup of an Insta Connect system so you can get your system set up within just a few minutes. All right, we're going to start by unboxing the system. Uh, you're going to get a system that looks very similar to this. Inside, we have the Insta Connect setup and configure instructions. We're essentially going to go through this document here in this video so you know exactly what to do. You're going to have a couple postcards that you can give to your friends to spread the Insta Connect word. In the bubble package, we have the Insta Connect Cloud Wings. And this is our 5G version. It looks like this. Our 4G version is the original version, and it is similar to the setup here. We also have the standard 15 foot cable. In the 5G, it is a USB A to C cable. If you decided to order our mount pole, that will be included in the box along with a couple of zip ties that go along with it. And we'll touch on this a little bit later. And then in a box down at the bottom, we have the NC Connect router right here. So in the box, we have the power adapter for your wall outlet. We'll set that aside. We also have an ethernet cable, which you probably won't need, but you have it there just in case. You have some hardware to mount it to the wall if you'd like to do that. We have the four antennas and we'll install those in just a second. And we have two different power cord options. We have what we call the pigtail. This part plugs into the wall outlet. It turns it into the four connector power plug for the front of the router. And this one here is if you would like to direct wire the router into 12 volts. The system can actually take 12 to 36 volts of power. So as the instructions mentioned, we're going to be putting the antennas on the router just like this. You'll notice you have a 2.4 and a five gig antenna connection. So if it, the antenna says 2.4, match it up to 2.4 on the back. And then the others may say five or 5.8 G like this one says, you can put that one on the five gig connector on the back. When using the router, you're gonna to want to keep your antennas in a vertical position. So you don't wanna store it like this because then the, the waves will go up and down. Instead, you want them to go out like this. And I recommend you put a little bit of space between the antennas like that. So fanning it out like this is pretty much perfect. Uh, if you have it sitting on a desk, you can install it like this. And that's uh, pretty much the right way. Because this right here is a five gigahertz, 2.4, 5, 2.4. So it gives a little spacing between the antennas. Next thing we're going to do is power up the unit. Now, since we're out in a campsite, we're actually gonna power the unit directly from a battery. Now, normally you would have your wall outlet. You would take this, plug it in to the little pigtail like that, plug this into the wall, and this one goes right into the front like so. But instead, we are going to power it with the direct 12 to 36 volt cable. So again, this will take anywhere from 12 to 36 volts right here. Now, what you wanna make sure you do is the red is positive and the black is negative. So we're actually gonna hook up and come in close on this, Luke. We're actually gonna hook up right into this Dewalt battery. This one says B negative. So we're gonna put this right here and this one says B positive. So we're gonna put it right there. And then we're going to plug this directly in see the lights here all right now we're going to wait until the red and both green lights are on the green lights are for the hs and the lr wi-fi networks that's the high speed and the long range networks and we'll talk a little bit more about that later but when you see those they can either be solid or blinking and as soon as you see those that means the wi-fi is on and we should be able to connect to the nc connect setup via our device Okay, on my iPad, we are going to look for the NC Connect setup. And since we've already done this, we have NC Connect setup right there. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to click on NC Connect setup. Now, if it says no internet connection, that's okay because we haven't finished setting up the NC Connect yet. One thing you're going to want to check is that you're always hooked up to the NC Connect setup network. In some devices, if you go to that Wi-Fi network and it sees one of your other Wi-Fi networks in the area, it might roam away from NC Connect setup because it doesn't have an active internet connection yet. So we're gonna go ahead, click NC Connect setup, and then we're going to use our document here. And we're gonna type HTTP colon slash slash my dot NC and hit enter. And that will bring you to the dashboard. Once we get to my NC, we click to run the setup wizard and we start with an NC Connect router password. Now you're gonna to want to remember the password that you put in here. So I'm gonna put one that's super easy, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You're gonna to have to do it two times and make sure that it matches. Now I suggest a stronger password for this because whoever has the password for this router will be able to change any settings inside the router. So once you click save, it's going to save your password and move on 
to the Wi-Fi setup wizard. In this setup wizard, you're going to set up two Wi-Fi connections. One we call the long range, or the 2.4 gigahertz, and one we call the high speed. We like to split them up because they each have a specialty. The long range can go long, it can go through walls and through obstacles, but it's not gonna give you the fastest speeds. The high speed can't go very far, but it'll give you fast speed. So if you're nearby the router, it's nice to use the high speed to get the fastest speeds. If you're outside of your rig or your home and you want to reach for that Wi-Fi connection, use the long range, but you might not get the total speed of the connection. So we're gonna go ahead and set these up. You're gonna have to set it to something that you know. I'm gonna set it to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight again. But again, you're gonna to want to use something much stronger than that. And be very careful with the password that you use. If you accidentally put spaces in there, it's going to put the space in your password and it's going to be hard for you to connect to the Wi-Fi. So go ahead and click save after that. It's going to apply the configuration changes and at that point when it comes back to the dashboard, it's going to ask us to please plug in the modem. So the modem module is shipped inside the wings. It's shipped in the cloud wings as well as our 4G wings. Now the cloud wings, you need a flathead screwdriver to open the lid. And then once the lid is open, the modem module is right inside, right here. So we're going to slide the modem module outside of the wings and we're going to take our SIM card and place it in the SIM slot 1. So SIM slot 1 is the slot that is closest to the antenna connectors. The SIM card goes in facing the front of the modem and the front of the modem has the sticker on it. You'll you put the curved portion in first with the contacts down and push it in until you hear it click. You want to make sure you push it all the way in until you feel it click. Just You can push it in, pop it in a couple times and then you'll feel the click of the SIM card and then we're going to slide this back into the wings like about this far and then we're going to grab the USB cable that's included. The 5G system uses the USB-C cable whereas the 4G system uses the USB-A on both ends. The USB-C cable end looks like this. We're going to run this through the lid, through the hole of the lid and set this aside right over here. We're going to take this part, plug it in to the modem module like this. After you plug in the USB cable, you're just going to want to check that your antenna connections are snug. We put them on rather loosely when they come from the factory, so you're going to want to just check that they're snug. You don't have to tighten them with a wrench or anything, just with your finger, which should be fine. Slide this in, and this actually locks into the system like that. So the cable will rest in between this little plastic portion right there. That holds the modem securely inside the angel wings. Then we're going to take the lid and snap it on. You're going to want to make sure that your antenna cables are not crossing each other. So what you can do is with these lower ones, you can push them in just a little bit so that these are not crossing. You don't want anything like that. That can uh, affect your signal. So we're going to keep it just like that. You can push these in a little bit if you need to. And then snap the lid on the wings like this and we will set this aside and then we take the USB-A connector and plug it in right to the front of the NC Connect. Once we plug it in we give it a few seconds and then the dashboard will change and give us a status of what's going on with the modem. Now while we're waiting for this to get set up I recommend putting your NC Connect together like this on a table or something to make sure that you get everything fully connected and fully going before you do your final install. Because you're going to want to make sure that your SIM card is active and everything is set so that you're getting internet on the system before you put it all in place. And once you get the new SIM card found message, go ahead and click on that to set up the new profile. You can give this SIM and any name that you would like. I'm going to give it Instilink because this is an NC-Link SIM, and then you can select the provider that you're going to use. You have to make sure you select the correct provider when you're setting up your SIM. So if you have Verizon, you can select Verizon, but if you have like a Verizon third party, you will not be able to select Verizon for that SIM. You'll have to select the third party that you're using. So here we're using a NICnet or InstiLink SIM, so we're going to select NICnet. If you need to set any TTL values, you can find that inside the advanced tab of the SIM profile. There are some predefined values inside that you can select or you can put in a custom value of your own. There's also an IP type. You can leave that as IPv4 unless you've been instructed by us to do something different and hit save 
and we're gonna let the system reboot. The modem will reconnect and as long as your SIM is active and you've selected the correct provider, your system should come online. This is all the setup that you should need to do. After you run your SIM setup, it may take a few minutes for the system to come online and you may see a status bar that's saying the NC Connect is working properly but there's something wrong with your provider. The system might just need a few minutes to settle in and then you should be able to see the signal strength and everything. Then once the system settles in, you can go ahead and refresh the page to see if the speed test comes up. If the speed test comes up down below, that means that you have an internet connection and you can run a speed test to see what your initial speeds are with the NC Connect. Now, it might not be the best speeds because we just have it sitting here on the table, but to get the best speeds, you should install the NC Connect outside. Now, since we're still in the setup process, we are still connected to NC Connect setup, which allows us to get into the router without using a password. Since we set up a Wi-Fi network with a password, we're going to want to change from the NC Connect setup to one of our networks that we set up. So we're gonna to go to Wi-Fi and then we're going to go to NC Connect HS or LR. And since we haven't connected to it before, it's gonna ask us to put in a password and our password was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you're gonna to want to join one of the networks that you just created. So once we are set up in NC Connect HS, we could go back to the dashboard and do a refresh just to make sure everything looks good. And then we're going to go down to the bottom where it says finish wizard and remove open Wi-Fi network. So we're going to go ahead and click that. And then we're going to run the finish wizard. And that's going to remove the NC Connect setup network. If you run that step while you're connected to NC Connect setup, it's going to kick you off the network. And you're going to need to be able to log into one of your Wi-Fi's. So if you didn't try your password already and you forgot what it was, uh, you won't be able to connect to your Wi-Fi because you've already removed your NC Connect setup. So you're going to want to connect to one of the ones you created before you run that step. In the instructions as well is a note on how to set up a second SIM. Basically you can follow those instructions. You'll just want to unplug the USB from the system, slide it out, put another SIM card in the system, plug everything back in, and when you do that you'll see another spot underneath that says second SIM. When you switch to it you'll be able to set that SIM up inside the dashboard. There's a few things on the dashboard that I want to touch on. You'll have your signal strength right at the top and then you'll notice some different numbers underneath. We have a CSQ, RSRQ and all of these different numbers essentially will help you figure out what type of connection, what type of signal that you're getting. You can pretty much tell by the signal if it's green that's good, if it's yellow that means it's, it's kind of on the edge, if it's red that means it may not be a very good signal. They're really just there for your reference. You don't really need to know much about them. Some people enjoy having all those numbers available to them, but all you should really need to know is that getting the wings outside is really the best way for you to get the best signal. Now there is an ant one and an ant two figure down there as well. Those measure two of the antennas on the system. Now the 5G system has four antennas, but we only get two figures for the numbers. Now what you just wanna make sure with those is that they're similar to each other. If you get one, that is farther away from the other, uh, that may indicate a problem with the antenna. In most cases, and we've seen this especially with AT&T, sometimes they will not report an antenna figure. So sometimes you may see a red exclamation mark next to one of them. But if you see that, just keep an eye on it. And as long as it at some point goes to a green check and doesn't stay at 140 for, for the whole entire time, then you're good to go. So here, as I'm talking on this one, we have a red check, but then we also have it going back to a green check. And that is very common for AT&T, so you don't have to worry about that. Now I wanna to touch on some of the most common issues that people have when setting up an NC Connect. And the first one is their device will roam away from the NC Connect network. Because when we first set up the NC Connect, it said connected with no internet. That's because we haven't finished the setup process of the NC Connect yet. So there is no internet. And now my device, if there would have been a Wi-Fi nearby that it had connected to before that it knows had internet, it will want to roam away from the NC Connect during the setup process. So if you ever have a note on your NC Connect that says you are not connected to the router, check that your Wi-Fi is still on the NC Connect setup. And if you're finding that your device is roaming away from the NC Connect setup, you can go into any other Wi-Fi's that you have and forget the those networks so that your device won't automatically roam away. The second most common problem that people have is using a SIM that is not activated. So when they put it in and they set it up, 
uh, it essentially says no service or it may show service but there's no internet so then the status bar will come up on the InstaConnect saying that we cannot sense an internet connection. Unfortunately there's been a lot of cases where providers have given out sims that are not fully active yet so you're going to want to check to make sure your sim is active before you're using it in the InstaConnect. A lot of people will take a sim from a device that they already have like a hotspot and put it in the InstaConnect if you do that, just check and make sure that your SIM is working in the device you're taking it from before you put it in the NC Connect. So now that we got the NC Connect all set up, we're going to go ahead and put it on our post mount right here. And this is an option inside our system if you'd like a mount that you can easily mount on top of your roof, of your camper, or any place that can essentially be drilled down. Pull mount has a couple screws that you can set the NC Connect wings on and slide into place, but you do not want to leave it like this. That's why we include zip ties in the box that you could use to secure it in place, both the top and the bottom, so that your wings aren't going to go anywhere. And that's pretty much the setup of the NC Connect. You can usually have this set up within five minutes as long as you stay connected to the Wi-Fi and as long as your SIM card is active. If you have any problems with your NC Connect setup, head over to our website, ncconnect.com. We have a couple different knowledge base articles that may help you with the installation. If you still have trouble, shoot us in a message and we'll be glad to help. Thank you so much. Hope you're having a wonderful day and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks, bye-bye.